A man can dream. A man could dream. One thing I did dream about is Returnal being really amazing um, when Mm. I first saw the trailers. Um, Way to go, Camille, with that transition. Such a good transition. Uh, You got some impressions because you've played Returnal. Give us all the deets. Well, you know, Camille, it's not a dream because Returnal (laughs) is a great game. Ooh. Yes. Um, I've, yeah. Nice. Th- thanks to uh, PlayStation Canada, I had a chance to play it like prior to launch, do a review of it, which you guys can find on squadsday.com. Uh, but just like top level views, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a it's a, an extraordinarily ambitious game for Housemark. Those familiar with their prior games, all very like bullet hell games, um, very arcadey in its style. So to come out and do a third person shooter that has deep sci-fi storytelling uh, while maintaining like a roguelike uh, gameplay loop. Mm-hmm. I think was really ambitious and they really pulled it off and we talked about it earlier in the show but the importance of taking this next gen hardware and utilizing it I didn't expect for them to come out and do such amazing things with like the dual sense we mm-hmm. we talked about it when the console came out but everything that Astro bots uh Playroom did was was awesome and it was quite novel but it did kind of feel like a like a demo or like a proof of concept Returnal does that, but on like a different level and actually uses it for its gameplay. So when you w- walk through the world and you see rain around you, you feel the different individual raindrops in the controller. That's and again, so going back cool. to what I was saying earlier, it's very subtle. The only reason I, I picked up on, on it in the first place, I put my controller down on the coffee table and it was and it was shaking like very subtly i was like mm. that's that's really weird. Like I don't know why I'm not getting attacked or anything. Picked it back up and then I was like whoa this is this is really wild yeah and the same goes for the audio as well the audio like if you're playing it through speakers or anything it's not anything to really write home about but when you put on the the pulse 3d headphone you have it i do oh okay okay and yeah it just creates this like immersive like 360 degree audio experience where you can pinpoint where different enemies are when an attack is coming towards you um and again going back to the dual sense the haptic or the adaptive triggers so every weapon has like a standard fire rate and and then an alt fire rate, which is like a super powered shot, essentially mm-hmm. on a cooldown. You pull mm-hmm. the trigger halfway and you can just do the regular and then you feel the tension and you have to pull past that to uh, start the alt fire. And it's just really, really well done where it's essentially adding a second or a new button to the entire experience while using like the regular uh, controller. That's but- cool. Yeah, I think like overall very positive experience. Um, again, going back to the the roguelike stuff for for those that don't know, Returnal kind of plays in a way that is similar to Hades, Dead Cells, stuff like that. So you you play as a, a space pilot named Celine. She crash lands on an alien planet, starts to explore it. Obviously, there are threats abound and everything. And along the way, you pick up different weapons, abilities, buffs, stuff like that, currency. But then each time you die, you wake up moments after the crash, kind of like Groundhog Day, you lose everything, you kind of have to start over again. Um, and then thus it kicks, it kick started this discourse that always happens in the gaming industry when um, difficult games come out, because it is a very difficult game, at least in my opinion. And mm-hmm. Yeah, the discourse is surrounding like the difficulty and the the balance that goes into difficult games. Yeah. So I, I wanted to. I know it's a very nuanced topic, and um, if we just don't have the amount of time to really dive into such a such a deep topic. But I, I kind of wanted to uh, pose a question to you guys: like, where do you guys land on difficulty in video games? How do you balance it? What is your preferred balance to it? And do you think that certain developers should tweak their vision in order to welcome more players into the fold? I think Absolutely I, not. I, yeah, so I, go ahead, oh, Caboose. man. No, I, no, you go ahead because because yeah, I'm going to disagree with you. Oh, I'm on the, I'm on okay. the team. Okay, go ahead. Okay. I, I say absolutely not. If the And this goes back to my point earlier. We need to understand, because there are games in general that do need accessibility, right? That is such yes. a huge thing. But yeah. I think that there we need to start now dividing the line between accessibility and like the, the design of a game, right? Mm-hmm. Because if a, a mm-hmm. game is designed to kick my teeth in, I want my teeth kicked in. Like, I'm okay yeah. with that. If, like, if I'm picking up Dark Souls, Bloodborne, um, I can't 
can't even remember the the most recent one that came out but like games like that are meant and like even on my side I play a lot of first person shooters games like Tarkov it's not something that I will play consistently but it's that it's an, and it's experience right it's that visceral difficult experience that makes you feel so rewarded when you accomplish the smallest task and I think that we need to start allowing for accessibility to get into games in terms of, of graphics and you know colorblind modes and mm-hmm. uh, tuning tuning certain settings without uh, kind of affecting the integrity of the game because there is something so coveted about people who have made multiple runs through Dark Souls and Demon Souls and you know there's like accolades that come with it and I think that that on its own is a genre of game um, and I think it's okay for some games to be too hard for people like I I kind of think that it, we have so many games that are just open and accessible we, we kind of need those, those difficult titles that aren't for everyone Yeah, I don't know I, to I, me in my personal opinion like there's just as much of an accolade that can go to somebody beating a game on the hardest difficulty when it has an option to choose the easiest one uh i think that it does come down to an accessibility thing i don't really have fun playing souls like games i had to play Sekiro for a review Mm -hmm. and i remember just not having the greatest time i remember being immersed enough into the world and into the story and thinking that that stuff was really cool but wishing that i didn't have to worry so much about perfect dodges and you know how much of a difficulty curve there is in that game i wish that that was a game that i could just enjoy the world just enjoy the lore from and that's it you know i and and granted like i get it i get it that those games have become as popular as they have because of how difficult they are and because of that difficulty curve you know like souls like games wouldn't be souls like that wouldn't even be a genre if it weren't for the fact that they were so difficult so i understand that that is the legacy of those games but i also don't think that legacy is tarnished if you just have the option to be able to play it and you know not be sitting there not having fun because how many sure. like rage compilations have you guys seen of these games you know like but that makes there's, it, yeah. right that's a part the, of the community so that's why like that, you know like how you said yeah. um you don't think it'd be tarnished right like I, and i'm mm. sorry to cut you off it's just no it's okay yeah. it's okay like um that it wouldn't be tarnished i think it would i think you know we're kind of in this phase of gaming where everything that seems like triple a everything that people are talking about or trending everyone has to play but that's not necessarily the case there are going to be games that you won't enjoy and that's Mm -hmm. fine you know and if you say you don't enjoy it it's just not your game it doesn't mean you're not a gamer if you don't want to play a soulsborne game that's fine you could still appreciate that world but how it's designed what those developers in that studio was trying to do it's mm. it's just not for you and that's fine you could play ghost right that has a similar world that's for you i think when you start making it where and it's not accessibility it's exactly what um, Malik's saying accessibility is different than difficulty mm-hmm. um when you're looking at games that are more difficult i feel like if you kind of dumb that down for lack of a better word it's more popular and the fact that it's difficult the fact that that's supposed to be the thing that gets under the gamer's skin it loses it because now people are talking about it in another sense they're talking about it more of the environment and just that world and or the story when this whole aspect of the game is just it's supposed to be hard to get through it's supposed to be a challenge um so yeah i'm on on, i understand what malik's saying i I guess i i think of I think of games like Devil May Cry that have had like 10 different difficulty modes, you know, and like every time they add a new update, there's a harder difficulty. And that's something that that is something that gets people back into the game. So granted, someone like myself, I could just play it on like normal and Mm -hmm. still have a blast and still find the combat to be incredibly engaging and to still think the story is rad and the characters are super cool and the presentation is just 10 out of 10. But if I'm somebody who was that into it, and really loved the game and wanted to be the best at it. I'll turn on the highest difficulty and go through a playthrough of that game on the highest difficulty, and it will be a challenge. It will be a challenge on the level of something like a Soulsborne game um, or a Souls-like game. So, like, I, I think that there is a, there's a way to to make your cake and have it too in this sense. But I can see as well. I can see both sides of it. I can understand the perspective of the fact that. This is how the games were. This is how it's been, Mm. you know, and it's not like anything's going to change. If it hasn't changed already, it's not going to change. And I'm just thinking, right? Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. 
No, but I was going to say, you brought up Ghost, too, and this is actually kind of funny because this is something I haven't really talked about ever. I wanted Ghost to be harder. I wanted that hard difficulty mm-hmm. to be insane. Sure. I wanted it to be, like, almost a Souls game. And I think we also, too, when you when we tie accessibility to difficulty, you see a lower cap on the hardest level. We don't see a lot of games. Like, Doom is one of the great examples where the hardest difficulty is, like, insane. You have to be superhuman. And I think yeah. that... <laughs> We need to we need to up that cap of how difficult the hardest difficulty is, but then have these lower levels that I don't want to I don't want to say that easier difficulties are more accessible because that's not always true. You know, there are people um, who are differently abled who are able to compete at the highest level with some people. Yeah. Um, but then also, right. too, EA just did a patent for the dynamic difficulty technology and that also brings to the question of if if the game is deciding for me that I'm struggling too much and it's going to make it easier, me as kind of like a competitive gamer, I'm going to feel cheated. I'm going to feel like I didn't actually complete it at the same level that my friends did, um, you know, and that, you know, maybe mm-hmm. I didn't actually play it on the hardest difficulty. Maybe I got my hand held for a little portion of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I, yeah, I agree with you. I was just saying, like, you brought up the example, Caboose, of uh, Devil May Cry, right? And yes, yeah. I think before, like, the older Devil May Cry's difficulty was a thing, right? Um, mm-hmm. But it, it's a hack and slash, right? So it's also about the movement, timing it with the, with the music and just the feeling of Keeping Devil May Cry. Keeping your combo up, you know? Right? Um, Keeping the combo up, the theatrics of Devil May Cry, right? That makes right. that game that genre like that type of its own genre and what the community really likes when i think of something um like any of the soulsborne games i don't think of the story i don't think of the world i think of how difficult it is um and i i really don't care about the other aspects like they're great don't get me wrong Mm -hmm. but it's not why i'm going to that game like i feel like other games of though like that are similar to that do story better do environment better yeah and they do i you're you're right i think they do i think they do dark souls games and blood like those dark like dark souls born games they do lore better than and world building better than some like story driven games because you you're going into these very hard to past areas like you feel like this world hasn't been explored past this certain point Mm -hmm. and then you go and you find a dead body and you're like oh wow like somebody else died here i i'm gonna push forward because it's it's like those little ingrained things yeah it's like Mm -hmm. even though that's not a real per because you can't see where real people died as well but like that uh like that aspect of it of just like pushing farther and getting through the pain like i i think that that's cathartic to some people yeah Yeah, Yeah, exactly the story right like it yeah it complements it yeah i think it's, it, it's just back to like what i was saying originally it's what the developers in the studio intend the game's design uh to right. what malik was saying is supposed yeah. to be um that i feel like then those elements of balancing again balancing a game out makes sense like something like marvel's avengers we talked about how they were making it more difficult to even level up mm-hmm. with a game like that that should not be the case with the type of game they were marketing and who the audience of that game. Um, yeah. It should be, there should be options of how you play um, the campaign and how you decide to go through, you know, those raids with your friends. Um, but to make it difficult, like that's a, that's an, an example where balancing to make it harder just didn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah it, it's very textured in a way because it, it all goes back to what the developer's vision is. I mean, you look at, yeah, Avengers, Assassin's Creed, they offer different difficulty options so people can bump it up all the way to hard, have that have that experience or go easy and just experience the story. But then I also think that, that the onus then lies on the individual developer and we... Because I, I agree with you, Camille and, and Malik. I, I thought I was going to be the odd man now, to be truth be told, <laughs> uh, when I was coming in here with a, this question. But I do think that the onus goes to the developer, and we kind of have to accept it. Like, mm-hmm. from software, coming out with Elden Ring, I would be surprised if they were like, fine, I've listened to you guys after all these years. I'll give you an easy difficulty yeah. for you guys, right? Right. And at a certain point, like, we just have to accept that. Some games are going to be difficult. Same with Cuphead. Same with yes. 
Hades to, to a certain extent and other really popular games like I don't like the notion that a developer has to change their ways because everyone wants in. Yeah. Yep. Because then it 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 just destroys like what their vision is and you're put you're boxing them into a corner just to appease everyone and again going back it, this is totally separate to accessibility I think yeah if you can balance those two difficulty and accessibility fine but yeah uphold your vision first and foremost because then you kind of just get lost in the sauce and a dark souls game without its difficulty then just becomes another game i guess yeah. i guess i just hope that there would end up being some middle ground like granted i know sure. that there's there's no use in complaining and sitting and begging for returnal for instance to add a difficulty option to lower the difficulty right there's just no point that's the developers intended it to be the level of difficulty that it's at and i haven't played returnal so i don't know what that level of difficulty is and you can tell sure. me how it is steve here but essentially the way that i'm thinking is I don't like difficulty that's punishing. That's mm. to the point where like I literally if I'm if I didn't get eight hours of sleep, had a, <laughs> a, a nice breakfast, you know, made sure I got some good exercise in to then jump on the game. I'm failing, you know, like right. I don't I don't yeah, like games that nice. are on that level of punishing difficulty where there is no room for error. Um, but games that are difficult in nature, like you mentioned Cuphead. And Cuphead is difficult. Yeah. Cuphead has, like, it's challenging. But it's challenging to the point where, like, you want to jump in and try again. You know, it's it's uh, it's simple enough that you want to do that. A game like Sekiro, like I played, has so many intricacies to it where, like, you have to make sure you know 10 different controls yeah. when you're going into yeah. every encounter. And if you're messing up on one of those 10, you're screwed. It's over. You know, so that that's, that's, that, type of, that, that, that's that level of difficulty that to me starts to lean towards not being fun mm -hmm. well, yeah you know, it all goes back to the person that's though, playing too, really quick. yeah and you and brought up a good point caboose um about the fact that for returnal you're not expecting like a difficulty option there i yeah. would argue differently just because of how the game was marketed we talked about this briefly about how it seemed like it was kind of like a third you know third yeah that's true yeah. adventure yeah. game space adventure and this is mm. not on the developers it may just have been on the marketing team how they marketed it right if i bought this game and it was this difficult i think i would have been a bit cheesed like not enjoying that type of game to then mm -hmm. have to punish myself to play this game just because of how beautiful it looks or what i thought you know this game would be so it would it would a little be uh, a little bit different in this situation for me. Yeah, yeah. Caboose, to your point too. What separate? So what separates something like Dark Souls, say, from like a fighting game at the highest level? Because there, like you mentioned, there's those controls and those, and there's very small windows for blocking and parrying and things like that. It what at what level do we say? Okay, like accessibility tools, uh, like complement the game instead of replacing difficulty well it's it's tough to say in comparison to something like a fighting game because when you play a fighting game and especially if you're jumping into something like ranked it's skill based mm -hmm. so whatever whatever your ceiling is you're playing against people that are at that same height uh in right. terms of their skill um and so whatever it is that you've learned thus far in that fighting game you'll be facing off against people that are at that same level and if you're playing like a campaign there's always that difficulty option. Uh, right. Granted, you know, when you face like the final boss, they want to increase that difficulty. But even some fighting games have implemented implemented systems where if you die a couple of times against the final boss, they finally tune it, like they tone it down. They bring right. it back. They reel it in a little bit so that you can just beat the game. You know, they don't want you sitting there 50 tries deep trying to beat the final boss of the fighting game right. or the story mode. Like, D let me just see the friggin' final cutscene. <laughs> you know, like they don't they don't want that to be the situation for some players. So there is a difficulty curve, there is a challenge there, and there's always like room to improve in fighting games, but there's never that need to for the sake of like moving forward or progressing in some way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Returnal's in a, kind of like a unique situation where there's not necessarily like a difficulty curve. It's kind of like spikes and then drops, and then it, all of it is RNG based, which I think is the biggest hurdle there, which opposed to like a, a Soulsborne game, you can grind, you can go through levels over and over again, get better weapons and stuff like that. Yeah. None of that exists in Returnal where you die, you lose everything, and then you have to start to run over again. And RNG could just dictate that you don't find that weapon that you really want or really need until like 45 minutes in when you're just struggling through it all. And 
my run could be completely different than Camille's and she could luck mm -hmm. out and get all the health, all the weapons she needs to succeed where me, I'm struggling the entire way through. So I think that's where the difficulty comes in. But uh, for people who are interested, I never th thought that Returnal was treating me in an unfair fashion. I thought every single time I was like, okay, I understand where I messed up. I'm just going to jump back in for that next go and, and try it again because it's, it's a satisfying gameplay loop for me at least. That's right. Where would you score it right now with, with how much you've played? I don't like scoring games to begin with because okay. numbers are very different. I, I again, right. I just arbitrary. say it's a very, yeah, exactly. It's very arbitrary, but I think it's very strong, very positive um, game. And okay. yeah, I would encourage people to at least try it out. I would have loved to, for them to come out with a demo so people could try it out. Because like Camille said, if you if you don't expect this kind of game going into it, yeah, you could see you could be like a little disappointed because the marketing for this game didn't really talk about the roguelike elements all that much, I believe anyways. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, play and hop into it. I'm hopefully I don't throw my controller at the TV, but we will see. I'll tell you guys next week how that goes. Uh, but for now, <laughs> that is our episode today. Uh, make sure to check out our website, squadstate.com. Steve, what are you working on? Uh, more Returnal stuff. Uh, just, uh, yeah, after doing the, the review, I've got some guides going up just to, you know, help you guys along. You know, some little tips I'm, here I and there. I might have to check those out when I pick up the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll do. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's about it for uh, the time being, anyways. And Malik, how about you? Uh, you know, I kind of in this weird period where I'm enjoying like TV shows and movies more than like games recently. Okay. But I will say. The Mass Effect Legendary Edition is coming out soon. As soon as that comes out, I will have lots of articles up because I am so excited <laughs> for that. But yeah, so I think that's really just what I'm waiting for right now. All right, and Caboose. Uh, yeah, I'm just kind of chilling. I've been jumping back and doing Justice 2, which has been a lot of fun, a nice little nostalgia trip. It's a four-year-old game, but like, man, that game is still, it's got legs. It's got legs. It's so much fun, especially it being on Game Pass now. It's been like repopulated, which has been a lot of fun to jump back into. But I'm also just chilling. I've been playing a little bit of Avengers. They just announced that they're adding like the Black Widow skin from Endgame and they're planning to do more. Uh, and like, I, I don't want to talk too much about it because I don't know if they'd be upset if I did. But Captain America's suit leaked and it looks really good. Um, so like, Ooh. I can't wait. I can't wait to like jump back in and actually play the game with the MCU suits because they should have been in the game from day one, but regardless, <laughs> they're coming now, and it's like actually getting me excited to play Avengers again, which is something I haven't had in like literally months, like a, like a long time. Uh, no deep cuts there, right, Malik? Yeah, I know. I... <laughs> they're actually. I want, I want Avengers to be good. I do, but it's. it's, it's we all, of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll see how long we'll, it takes. We'll see how long it takes. Um, <laughs> I just noticed Caboose tried drinking his water um, with the cap on. It's okay, Caboose. Okay. Okay. You didn't have to call me out. It's okay. You didn't have to call me out. It's okay. Um, for myself, I'll be chilling. Uh, I'll be open up my water bottle, right? Um, and yeah, you can just check out all my adventures at This Is Camco. But make sure to tune in uh, squadstate.com for all the articles that uh, Steve mentioned, as well as Squad State on Twitter. Twitter, if you if there's any topics or news that you want us to discuss, tweet us, let us know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Caboose is going to practice how to drink water for next week, and we'll yep. see wow. you then. <laughs> Bye, guys.